Hi everyone, my name is Sarah White. I am Director of Operations at St. John's Church Foundation, otherwise known as Historic St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia, and I am here today to speak with John Tucker III. John is a deacon at St. Paul's Catholic Church. He was Chief Staff Attorney at the Court of Appeals of Virginia from 1990 until his retirement in 2018. Other roles in the community, president of the Parsons Cause Foundation. He is an actor here at Historic St. John's Church in our Liberty or Death uh, reenactments. And he plays a fierce Patrick Henry. I've seen it, I believe it. Um, and of course, the reason we're here today, president of the Nora Houston Foundation, which is a nonprofit dedicated to celebrating and preserving the legacy of Richmond, Virginia artist, teacher, and activist, Nora Houston. Thanks, Sarah. Glad to be here. We need to start with who was Nora Houston? Well, uh, she was born in Richmond in 1883. Like you said, an artist and an activist. She was the only child of Dr. Henry Houston, um, who was a prominent physician and Josephine Dooley Houston, um, who was the sister of Major James Dooley of Maymont fame. And by the way, there's some debate as to whether the name is pronounced Houston or Houston. Uh, I think the more accepted pronunciation is Houston. But okay. uh, when she was two years old, her father died. And so her uncle started playing a, a more prominent role in her life at that point. Uh, of course, uh, everyone in Richmond knows about Maymont and about the Dooleys, uh, and he was a um, not only a, a benefactor of hers throughout his life, uh, but he was a, a close uncle who was very involved with her, uh, as was her aunt Alice Dooley, who uh, was very involved with the raising of Nora. Nora lived on Franklin Street in downtown Richmond, and at the age of 10, she started taking art lessons from a neighbor. There was another young girl who started taking art lessons at the same time, and her name was Adele Clark. From that point on, Adele and Nora became very close friends, and they remained lifelong friends and later became business partners. When the, in their teenage years, they both joined the Richmond Art Club, uh, which at that time was located at 4th and Franklin Streets. Um, Major James Dooley at the time was the president of the art club. And okay. Nora and Adele took lessons from um, uh, illustrator William Shepard and from sculptor Edward Valentine. Okay. Uh, a couple of other teachers that uh, Adele and Nora had were women by the name of Ann Fletcher and Hallie Talibur. Uh, and these were more progressive teachers. Tolliver was good friends with uh, William Merritt Chase, who was a noted artist and art teacher in New York City. And in 1904, Chase contacted Tolliver and said, I have some scholarships for my art school if you have any promising students. So Nora ended up being one of those promising students and she went to New York to study under Chase in 1905 and 06. Uh, at the age of 22, she went there. Uh, of course, her uncle paid her expenses for her. And after her first year there, uh, she was offered the position of monitor, which is basically teaching assistant. And it just so happens that uh, during that year, Adele got a scholarship to go there. So in 1906-07, uh, the two of them, Nora and Adele, roomed together in New York while going to Chase's school. Chase, he encouraged students to go outside of the studio and to uh, paint people in their surroundings and uh, events uh, outside of the studio. Uh, the other two uh, teachers were Rock Henri and Kenneth Hayes Miller. Um, they encouraged the depiction of working class individuals and immigrants. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just so happened that there were a lot of Armenian immigrants in lower Manhattan and in Brooklyn at the time. And uh, they had 
fled from Armenia due to the difficulties there. And uh, Nora ended up painting three prominent uh, portraits of Armenians that she encountered in New York at the time. In 1907, uh, Nora did return to Richmond. She set up a studio and she began taking commissions. Uh, at this time, she painted a self-portrait and a portrait of her mother, Joseph, Josephine. She also uh, um, developed a friendship with a pianist named John Powell. And John Powell had been through Europe um, and he really encouraged Nora to develop your artistic ability. You need to go to Europe and you need to study in Paris. Right. And so Nora prevailed upon her uncle uh, to support her going to Paris to study. And in February of 1908, she set off for France, for Paris, uh, where she did study for about a year and a half. And the most uh, notable thing of her tenure there in France is that uh, she painted a portrait of a French boy. It's titled French Boy. Uh, and it's probably the best uh, piece of art uh, that is in the collection of the Nora Houston Foundation. And so she stayed in Paris for about a year and a half studying and painting. And then at the end of 1909, she came back to Richmond. She and Adele began teaching at the Richmond Art Club. Um, uh, amongst their students, uh, Teresa Pollock, um, who most folks in Richmond art circles know that name. Um, she was prominent in the founding of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, um, oh. the VCU art department, and also was involved with art at University of Richmond. Um, and during this time, Nora started uh, befriending uh, folks in Richmond's Jackson Ward. Uh, which was called the Harlem of the South. Um, it was a African-American community and based upon the influence of her New York teachers, she went out of her studio into the community and uh, painted people in real life. And we're fortunate to have a, a number of paintings of Jackson Ward life uh, from Nora during this period. Um, Fourth Street in winter, Fourth Street in summer, three portraits, Sally, Nicolina, and a young Negro woman, woman are uh, from that era. So that um, was 19, that was around 19, the 10s? In the 19, 1910s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm interested in something else that happened in 1909. You mentioned she came back to Richmond from uh, studying abroad, mm -hmm. painting abroad uh, in Paris. Uh, something else happened in 1909. Adele, Nora, Nora's mother, and Nora's aunt, Alice Dooley, they all go to a meeting. That was in November of 1909. And it was the first meeting in Richmond um, that is known about right. of women gathering together to uh, advocate for the right to vote. And um, from that meeting, the Equal Suffrage League of Virginia was formed. The Equal Suffrage League would play a prominent role in Nora's life for the next 11 years. Uh, Nora became very much involved in the movement for women's suffrage. Um, there's a very famous photo uh, where the Equal Suffrage League had a parade uh, through Capitol Square in Richmond. And uh, there is a, a car with some women sitting on it and some standing around it. Well, both Nora and Adele are in that famous photo. But Nora uh, was a delegate to the first state convention of the Equal Suffrage League, and she was a delegate to every convention from 1914 to 1920. Nora developed into uh, quite a public speaker. Um, she began traveling throughout Virginia to 
speak at public gatherings about women's suffrage. Nora traveled around uh, on behalf of the Equal Suffrage League, and Adele more or less stayed in Richmond, minding the business of the, the art club. Um, but together they designed posters and banners and postcards and leaflets uh, supporting the, the cause. By 1916, every town in Virginia with a population of at least 2,500 had a local suffrage league. That's and right. That's five years yeah. when she started traveling. And that was, that was largely responsible to Nora because uh, Nora traveled the state meeting with these local groups and helping them to organize and, and set up these uh, uh, local uh, league branches. Nora and Adele were very clever. Um, they would set up their easels in front of their studio and uh, they would begin painting and crowds would gather to see what they were painting and then they would launch into um, a little recitation, or oration rather, of, uh, of why women's suffrage should be supported. Um, they would do this in front of the uh, in front of the art club, later in front of their studio, and also uh, uh, Sixth and Broad was, a very, of course, a very prominent place in Richmond at the time. They would sometimes uh, give speeches at Sixth and Broad. During one such speech, uh, Nora was hit by a rock oh. thrown by oh. a disgruntled onlooker. And years later, after her death, that rock was found amongst her prized possessions. Oh, wow. Uh, amongst her keep. The Equal Suffrage League was uh, somewhat racist, to be, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, a lot of the members of the league basically were advocating for suffrage for white women. Um, in fact, one argument was made to legislators that uh, by giving suffrage to women, it would solidify white supremacy because there more, were wow. more uh, white women than, uh, than black women. Some members of the Equal Suffrage League uh, openly or, you know, advocated or, or embraced these racist arguments. Uh, uh, Nora and Adele did not, they did not believe in those arguments, uh, but they did not speak out at that time because they probably would have been kicked out of the league if they had. Mm -hmm. um, so they kept their opinions to themselves at that point. The, the tactic the Equal Suffrage League first took was to approach the Virginia General Assembly and try to get the Virginia General Assembly to support women's suffrage. Uh, that was rejected three times between 1912 and 1916. Um, so then there was a change in strategy. Right. Um, instead of going state by state to try to get a federal constitutional amendment passed. Um, in 1918, President Woodrow Wilson endorsed the Constitutional Amendment, and in the spring of 1919, it passed Congress. Then it had to go to the states, and the three quarters of the states needed to ratify it. And finally, on August 18th, 1920, uh, Tennessee clinched it by ratifying the uh, amendment, and the 19th Amendment came into law at that point. That's right. Um, and so we have our 100th anniversary coming up this week on Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Which, uh, which will connect with a very important event that you are hosting. So the, now the constitutional federal amendment has passed. So then Nora and Adele start trying to register people to vote. This is where I, I wanted to emphasize earlier that they kept their views about race to themselves at that time, because right. once the amendment was passed, they actively tried to register African-American women in uh, Jackson Ward. Um, they canvassed Jackson Ward, uh, and they personally assisted uh, hundreds of women in registering to vote in time for the 1920 presidential election. 
and, and this aspect I find fascinating because uh, they befriended the um, the ministers of Jackson Ward churches, and they invited those ministers to their studio on Franklin Street in Richmond for strategy sessions. So uh, they did help a, a lot of women uh, register to vote in 1920. And then the Equal Suffrage League morphed into becoming the Virginia League of Women Voters. And the two of them were founding members of oh, the Virginia okay. League of Women. Yeah. You mentioned how she and Adele, as soon as the amendment was passed, went into Jackson Ward, started mobilizing, trying to get um, black women registered to vote. So she made connections in that community that then she was on a, a board for interracial relations in Richmond. And she also worked on children's issues like child labor, children in the, in the justice system or the juvenile justice system as it might come to be known. Um, yeah, there were, there were two entities that she was involved in in the 1920s. One was called the Commission on Interracial Cooperation. It was fashionable around this time in southern states to have these interracial commissions, and Virginia had one. Nora became involved in it. Um, she eventually became the chair of the commission. Um, then they set goals under her leadership of improved housing, uh, creating libraries uh, and schools, and the commission documented instances of uh, uh, clan uh, attacks, uh, genes, and sexual exploitation of black women. Um, and to your point, uh, Nora frequently uh, met with ministers and, and uh, leaders in the Jackson War community, and that led her to being uh, permitted to paint uh, the First Communion at St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Jackson Ward uh, during this time period. And uh, it is a fascinating painting. I, I, I must say she took a little artistic license with that painting. In the painting, Nora depicts the priest and the nuns as being black, but they weren't. They were white. And another thing that Nora became involved with during that time uh, was the uh, Children's Code Commission. Uh, this was established uh, at the urging of the Virginia League of Women Voters, and its purpose was to review Virginia laws regarding children's health, labor laws, uh, compulsory education, and the like. And the governor appointed Nora as the head of the Children's Code Commission. A painting that she did during this period was called Children's Amendment. Uh, it depicts dozens of children ascending a staircase uh, to a set of double doors that leads to an unknown realm. Uh, Eighteen wing figures of representing guardian angels line the path and there are 14 women depicted bearing shields, and the thinking is that the 14 women represent members of the Children's Code Commission, and they are protecting the children from these large, ominous figures that loom over them, representing danger and death. Um, so that, that painting grew out of uh, Nora's work with the Children's Code Commission. Uh, under Nora's leadership, the Code Commission introduced 28 bills in the General Assembly, uh, 20 of which passed, and involved things such as uh, uh, the juvenile court system, abolition of child labor, um, mm -hmm. construction of children's hospitals, uh, occupational therapy requirements for children in the hospitals, um, and an eight-hour workday for children. Nora's work and the work of the other women on the commission uh, prompted one Richmond factory owner to say that these meddlesome women are bent on spoiling the competitive advantage which child labor and cheap female labor give the South. Right, of course. Um, what, um, what, what kinds of child labor was happening right then? 
I just don't know. Um, mainly factory work. Screwing in nuts and bolts and... Uh, that or even perhaps in more dangerous settings uh, in factories that uh, uh, had a high injury or death rate. Uh, children were forced to work in those too. Children as, as young as eight were working 10 to 12 hour days um, prior to the Children's Code Commission doing its work. Uh, and one important thing, it seems small to us today, but uh, uh, they got legislation passed to, to limit the hours children could work to eight hours a day. It seems like a small thing, but uh, uh, at the time it was huge and there was a lot of opposition to wow. that law being. What, do you know what happened to her during the Great Depression? Was she... Around in 1928, she kind of took a pause from her social justice work. She, she was rather exhausted and she said she needed a break. And um, so she, there was a period of time starting in 1928 when she started concentrating more on her art. Okay. Um, and of course, the Great Depression hit in 1929. Um, that affected her um, because she had, at that point, uh, pretty much gone through the inheritance that her uncle had left her. Um, so Nora and Adele were not wealthy people uh, at this time. And they had to struggle, just like a lot of people did in the Depression. And they became part of the uh, Works Progress Administration of the New, New Deal. Uh, it hired struggling artists uh, to paint mur murals uh, for government buildings. In fact, Adele was hired as the director uh, in Virginia of the WPA wow. project. Um, Nora was hired as an artist, painted a mural for the Roser Bauer branch of the public library, which was the first public library in Virginia for African-Americans. Um, okay, does that still exist? Uh, it, no, it does not. I'm no, sorry. okay. She, she also became, uh, she didn't totally abandon uh, uh, social justice work. Uh, she shifted her focus a little bit in the 1930s. Uh, she had been a longtime member of the Catholic Women's Club of Richmond. And in 1934, she was persuaded to become the president of the club. Under her leadership, they, the club concentrated on art appreciation, social justice, and civic matters. Uh, they were particularly involved in issues of homelessness and uh, neglected children. Uh, and they worked closely with St. Joseph in placing children in orphanages or getting them adopted by um, individuals. Uh, in fact, Nora during this period was an active volunteer at the villa and there is a life-size portrait of Major James Dooley at the villa which was painted by Nora. There are a couple of notable paintings that um, she did during this time. Uh, one was of the Rotunda at UVA and another one in 1932 and it's titled The Last Parade of the Confederate Veterans. Uh, it was the last reunion of Confederate veterans. It was held in Richmond at, on the grounds of what is now the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. During the period from 1936 to 1940, she had numerous exhibits uh, throughout the country, um, not only places around Virginia, but also Chicago, San Francisco, Washington, New York. Uh, in 1940, Nora had a one-woman show at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, um, one of the paintings that was exhibited was entitled Mary Frances. It depicted a young African-American girl, uh, and the museum folks were so impressed by it that they bought it for the permanent collection at the museum. Um, Nora passed away on February 20th, 1942, from a sudden illness. Um, her funeral mass was held at St. Peter's Catholic Church at 
8th and Gray Street in Richmond, and she was buried at Shaco Hill Cemetery uh, in Richmond in the Houston, Houston family uh, in an unmarked grave. After her death, her, her mother Josephine was still alive. Her mother lived until 1946, um, but 50 of Nora's paintings were at the studio that Nora and Adele shared. Josephine uh, told Adele, you know, you take care of these paintings. Uh, you do with, with them what you see fit. But Adele kept the paintings. Um, and in 1972, she gave the paintings to her church, uh, St. Paul's Catholic Church in the Ginner Park area of Richmond, uh, to be preserved and displayed. And for about 10 years, the, the church displayed the paintings, uh, but then thereafter, um, they stayed in storage on church property uh, for the next 33 years, sometimes in not so great a condition. And finally, in 2015, the Nora Houston Foundation was established. And so since 2015, the foundation has, has been about the business of trying to restore and exhibit uh, the paintings. We, we've established a priority for uh, uh, the restoration of these paintings. One of the first things we wanted to do was to restore the six paintings that deal with Jackson Ward life. Mm -hmm. And we have successfully done that. Um, the next three paintings that we want to focus on are French Boy, which is uh, arguably the best piece of art in the whole collection. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, Last Gathering, uh, Last Parade of the Confederate Veterans, which obviously has historical importance, and the portrait of Josephine Dooley um, Houston, uh, Nora's mother. Uh, so uh, that is where the foundation is, is going to be concentrating its fundraising efforts in the next year or so. And one thing that uh, we discovered at the foundation in doing our research was that Nora was indeed um, buried in an unmarked grave. So one of the additional goals the foundation took on was to uh, erect and dedicate a suitable marker at her grave site. We decided that it would be fitting to have the dedication Mm -hmm. and the, the blessing of the marker on the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. In, the, in Capitol Square, um, Virginia has unveiled the monument to mm -hmm. Virginia, uh, to women in Virginia, and Adele is one of the figures that is uh, represented there um, in, in statuary. Uh, there is also um, a number of prominent women who have their names on, on bricks or stones there. Nora's name is on one of those. Um, and certainly taking nothing away from Adele, but uh, I think people know about Adele more so than they know about Nora is because of Adele's longevity. Um, uh, Nora died in 1942 at a relatively young age, and uh, Adele lived to 1983 to age 100. Um, okay. but they were during their lifetimes, I mean, from, uh, 10 years on onward, almost inseparable. And, uh, uh, you really can't, uh, uh, view Adele without Nora and you can't view Nora without Adele. And, uh, so I'm glad we can finally celebrate Nora's life this way. Good. Yes. This is amazing. Thank you very much. August 18th, Tuesday mm -hmm. at seven o'clock. Correct. At Shaco at Hill Cemetery. Shaco Hill Cemetery. Okay. And, uh, and our featured speaker is um, uh, Judge uh, Hannah Locke of the United States District Court for the Eastern yep. District of Virginia. Um, Judge Locke is the first uh, female federal judge in Richmond, but uh, the public is invited and we would love to see folks out there appropriately socially distancing, of course, um, to celebrate the life of this uh, wonderful woman. Thank you very much for telling 
us all about Nora Houston. For more information on the Nora Houston Foundation, go to norahouston.org, and that is Houston spelled Houston, uh, norahouston.org, for more information about that ceremony, and we will um, hopefully see you soon. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. All right. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Bye-bye.